Good evening. <laughs> you know, it really does suck that we have to keep meeting like this. So, uh, what is up? This is everyone's favorite Minx, Minx Couture. Minx Couture from the Boogie Down Bronx. And I know that a lot of you are probably or have been waiting for this rant. Um, I wanted to take my time to first, you know, calm down. Calming down before lashing out is is what I'm trying to do now because I feel that, number one, I don't want to have to take back anything that I'm saying but I also have people that look up to me and really care about my image and I just don't want to make and anyone that I know very well look at me like I'm crazy. Okay, so. A couple of years ago, 2020, right? It was brought to my attention that there were some you know, some fugazi shit going on, you know. In this process uh, of this uh, fugazi shit that was going on, you know, I've met some real cool people. I've met some, you know, talented artists. And there's just been a lot of pushback from independent artists that felt that the stories that we were exposing and talking about was destroying the hip hop community. And it really bothered me, you know, to, to come into uh, a playing field where you're assuming that you're going to be welcomed with open arms because you're bringing something different to the table you're a, a platform that has a podcast with this podcast, you know, you're highlighting independent artists and the hard work that they do. You're interviewing independent artists and the hard work that they do. Um, and, and not just independent artists, just anyone that is independent and taking pride in providing a platform for that. And then somehow or another 2020 came along and this story was presented to me about rappers and I'm talking you know rappers that I grew up on were out here in the direct messages during a pandemic trying to steal money from their fans Bruh. and that that made me feel some kind of way because prior to this incident I was already on my platform educating artists about significant uh Fugazi shit that was going on with people that were bloggers, people that claimed that they did press, uh, people that claimed that they had radio uh, airplay. I just felt that my platform was dope because we were talking about it. And a lot of people didn't know if they were being scammed. A lot of people didn't know that, you know, this is what was going on. They thought that they were investing into solid opportunities. And I felt that it was my duty to step forward and say you getting played you're getting played right so you know there was a lot of people that did not like what I was doing and then there were some people that became inspired to do what I was doing and you know you don't yeah you don't you don't really uh see these particular people anymore because it was a clout thing it was a come up it was allowing people to ride on the coattail of a very, uh, very, very, very uh, controversial story. And they wanted their names to be attached to it. But again, it's 2024. And I think the last tweet that I actually put out about this was in, in, in May. So it, the thing is, is that I'm not knocking people for not continuing the conversation. I'm pretty much saying, don't come back. <laughs> 
okay, just d- don't come back. Bruh. Don't come back to the conversation. Don't rehash elements of your contribution to this because I recall me financially having to put up the money in order for me to have a website um, and not just myself, just a couple of other people that were part of this were also contributing to the upkeep and maintenance of this platform. And as of today, the platform still stands. It's just that the cloud server that was hosting all the videos that we've archived and saved, I just have to re-upload them. No issues, no biggies, okay? So let's talk about what brought me here today. What brought me here today was my homie who tagged me on X. I hate to say that. I I fucking, uh, fucking hate it. Anyway, my homie that tagged me on X and said, didn't Minx Couture uh, talk about this? Uh, Raise awareness about this? Like, didn't, what was it Minx that 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 HBIC that discussed this, um, I'm not going to say it was just me. I'm just going to say that a lot of the other people that also talked about this shit, it was too much for them, right? I'm not knocking them. I mean, who the fuck wants to get doxxed? You know, who who the fuck wants to wake up and go into your comment sections and see that your home address and everything has been posted in your comments and they're telling you to shut the fuck up, okay? Who... Who in their right mind wants to go through that? Well, I did. I did. I'm not looking for a pat in the back. You know, there's a lot of people that will say things like, you should be happy that they at least reported the story. And I'm like, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that you have what I look like. It's an outsider, right? It's an outsider. A person that came to sit at the cool kids table, but did not understand that there was a hierarchy here of people that have already discussed this shit that was been going on. And has been part of this since I'm not even going to say day one. I was probably like a day 30, but still out of 12 months of the year, I may have not started January the 1st, but I was probably there around the 31st when people were tagging me and saying, Hey, look, you need to look into this scam. Right? So of course I woke up today, great feeling. And I was tagged on this article by Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone, And what made it very strange, which my homie Cardo pointed out, is is this shit here. This shit here. The one eye symbolism, like right there in your face, right? It wasn't in my face, you know, Cardo had to point it out. I was just so furious, like, what the fuck is going on? And, and then he pointed this out and I'm like, wow, I didn't really look at it this way. Because the question that I have here is, and there's a few questions. The first question is why the fuck this image, right? Why this image? Why the number is 327, excuse me, three, I can't even tell. Why the number is 3727480. Then you have the Benjamin covering Neo's left eye. You have a verification badge, which remember my verification badge merch, right? Blue check motherfucker, okay? Remember that. We had the blue check motherfuckers, right? And then you have Jadakiss with the one eye symbolism. So what the fuck was all this shit about? I'm pretty sure that there's probably some like gematria value that adds up to this shit because Rolling Stone to roll this stone (laughs) on, on, on what, what date is this? The fourth. So June the fourth, they decided to drop this shit. And we've been talking about this shit since 2020. Right. So I have a couple of, 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 grievances about this article. First of all, 
when this article dropped, it was accessible to the public. I'm not really familiar with how Rolling Stone works, but once people started tagging me and saying, Minx, you know, then I noticed that the article went behind a paywall. So it really didn't hit like I thought it would. It didn't really hit. Like it kind of was like, you know, controversy, controversy, controversy. Wow, people are talking about it. And then now it's behind a paywall. You have to pay to read the article or subscribe to the uh, Rolling Stone in order to read the article. But if this is an article that is meant to help individuals, like, first of all, come forward and say, yo, this shit happened to me, which I don't think a lot of artists are going to do that because they don't want to make themselves look like they are horrible businessmen or women who invested into a scam. This is what they bank on. They bank on people to say, oh, well, ooh, well lesson learned. <laughs> a lot of people said that too. A lot of people said that too. Like, oh, you know, I guess I learned my lesson. But this was not a lesson to be learned. This is a crime involving cash transactions. And... I, as much as I used to try to, you know, tell artists back then, like, to come forward and say, look, you know, if more people come forward and say that this happened to them, then this, this would be like a further investigation. But people were like, oh, my my second favorite part, uh, I don't want to hurt my chances. I don't want to hurt my chances. What chances? Right. I used to say, what what fucking chances are, are you not wanting to hurt? Because you're the one that's paying six hundred dollars for a fucking story share. What chances? When did it become OK for social media payola at that point? Because besides you having the mixtape scams, you had um, the mixtape scams, which then elevated into the playlist scams. Right. This is why I say that there's a couple of discrepancies about this article. But this is what's been going on. Right. It's what's been going on. All right. So let 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 us continue. OK, so minus this shit aside, I want to read. You know, I, I just want to read how they wrote it. OK. They thought the top artists were giving them their big break. But was it all a menu of bullshit? Bruh. Independent artists think that they've landed their big break when the top artist offers to work with them, only to discover a hollow marketing scheme thousands of dollars later. That, 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 that's not what it was. That's not what it was. Bruh. I'm sorry. It's just not what it was. Um, independent artists, like, did not believe that this was their big break. Independent artists looked at this opportunity. During the time of pandemic, was it was kind of like a camaraderie, right? You know, we're all locked in the house together. And, you know, a lot of people initially thought that these celebrities were like, you know what? You know, I, I really put a lot of time into my career. And I think the best thing I could do is, is do something to give, give back to them, right? Let, let's do something to give back to them. And yes, obviously we knew Anybody knows in order to invest in yourself, um, you know, into your career, you have to invest in yourself. So we I don't think artists expect expected people like Jada Kiss and all these folks to do this shit for free. I don't think they expected that. I think that what we did not expect was the shit was going to be fucking six hundred dollars. <laughs> Six hundo for a story share. At the time of not only inflation of pricing, but inflating of views and 
people didn't realize back then, which I was saying, that you could do that. You can inflate your views. You can increase the likes. You can add comments of fire emojis because that's how you knew you was hot because you go on Fat Joe's page and he reposts you on his page for six fifty, dollars uh, half to this cash app and hash to that, half to that other cash app. Wow. Um, they thought that people weren't going to question that kind of sort of acting like influencers when they didn't have to act that way because they already had a following. But let's continue. So, no, it was not an opportunity for a big break. You, we all know that's not how that works. So when you do this, it's kind of like condescending to independent artists thinking that we're that fucking dumb, that we thought that someone, Fat Joe climbing into your direct messages was your big break. Bruh. Okay. Moving along. Let's read the second part here. It says two artists who spoke to, hold on. Two artists who spoke to Rolling Stone said they paid Neo for an intro after the star said he was looking for new talent, later saying that it required a budget. Both say that the R&B singer took the money and disappeared. Somebody of this magnitude shouldn't be asking for money. This motherfucker. Bruh. Now, again, I don't know if a lot of y'all were around during the inception of this company that was designed for independent artists called Loom. It was L-U-U-M. And Neo was like the face of this company. And I was part of Loom before he came on board to this shit. You know, Loom was kind of like a SoundCloud marketplace for people that did mixing and mastering and did beats and stuff like that. But you had artists that posted their music and posted their content and you had actual listeners that commented and tipped um, the songs that they enjoyed. But Neo was the face of that. Neo was the face of that. And Loom went under. I don't know if y'all remember that, right? So of course, when I saw that Neo was part of this shit, it made me think about Loom and saying what a lot of people didn't ask at the time, but but I sure did was, well, when these companies sunset and they go under or they say they didn't get funding or their investors did not feel the need to invest in the platform, so they're going to, you know, either rebrand or sunset the shit. What happens with all that data, all that music, all the pictures, all the uploads? What happens with all that? They ran off with that. And, and, you know, I'll probably say I'm a victim to that. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if more people come forward and say that songs that they're coming out sound very similar to songs that they have created or uploaded to these platforms. OK, so Neo was a joke to begin with. Um, yeah. Hold on, let me go back. All right. The second part. So, again, okay, again, they're talking about Neo. Um, then they're talking about music figure Big Trill has emerged being con connected to the marketing scheme. He takes offense of the notion that the opportunities are a scam or a ripoff. That's, he says it's never promised any results. Right? Now, this is what I believe the issue here was. A scam is a deceptive practice right? It's a deceptive practice that tells you that if you do business with that practice, that you will get what you invested in, which I will say that, okay, I get it. Nothing is guaranteed, right? We know nothing is guaranteed, but the fact that it was packaged and sold like it was is what makes it the scam, right? You're telling people that, so-and-so is going to share a 
video of yours in their stories. Great. Then they go ahead and they show you screenshots of how many people viewed that story. So again, with with independent artists that used to irritate me is, does that mean, like, what does that mean? A hundred people saw your story. What does that mean? Because nothing came of that 100 views. How many of those people bought merch? How many of those people invested in your monthly subscription for your newsletters? How many people email, excuse me, how many emails did you collect from that 100 views? See, this is the, the mindset that I've always had, and I've been pretty much preaching on the Mink Show, that views don't mean shit if you cannot convert it into something. This is why there's a conversion rate with everything. If I put a video up and it gets 100,000 views on TikTok, which has happened before, you better believe that I'm checking the analytics for the link in my bio and you're seeing at least maybe 20% of people that took the time out to take a look at the link that was in my bio to say, who is this girl? Where is she from? I've never seen her before. She's very interesting. You know, she has good concepts and I want to hold on to her. So I'll follow her. You know, they may not look at it initially that first day, but they will get around to doing it within that first week. This is what I did not understand and what upset me about this opportunity. Because I'm like, y'all could have just hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I, I would have came up with a marketing plan for all parties that would have made sense, right? But this is why I kept saying my spirit did not like verses. My spirit did not like verses because for me, I noticed that every single person that was named on this shit had a versus episode. So I said, you know, if I'm looking at it, at it from a marketing perspective, it makes sense. Go on versus, get everybody hyped up with the nostalgia of what the fuck you did back in the day. And then, you know, people tune into that when it was on Instagram. And then people supporting, you see the streams are going up. And then after the streams go up, now is the best time to climb into the direct messages after you post on your page Tag someone who's working, which I will tell you that if you have a friend, a family member, a homie, an enemy, and a celebrity puts up on their page to tag, you fucking tag me, bro. It's a wrap. You are getting fucked up because why would you set me up like that? Right. Because you tag the person and then they climb into your direct messages. Right. So no, 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 no. Don't fucking tag anybody. You send them the link. Hey, look, I saw this. I thought of you. Do you want me to um, uh, add your username to this? Ask first. Ask first. All right. It's just an etiquette thing for me. You wouldn't like it if somebody gave out your fucking phone number to, to someone. And I know it's not your phone number, but it's still how you can be reached. So let's just be smart. You know, let's be smarter. All right. So let's look at these verses joints. Okay. Now, we definitely know Red Man. Red Man has been on this Bruh. shit. Okay. Fat Joe. The Locks. Uh-huh. 100%. Uh, who else? That's all they did. What the fuck does Call of Duty have to do with verses? Oh, Bow Wow. Of course. Bow Wow. <laughs> Fucking Bruh. motherfucker. Um, can't stand him. I'm sorry. I have every right. But once again, if it wasn't for these platforms, which people forget that verses was stolen, that idea. I'm not saying allegedly. I know this for a fucking fact. You can fact check me. You can hit me with whatever the fuck you want. I was a brand ambassador with Station Head before it became a fucking streaming farm. Bruh. Okay. 
And yes, I still use Station Head. I mean, you know, sometimes you have to use apps that you can't stand because they just work. It's like you don't like the politics. You don't like the fucking owner. Some days are like dragged. But you just have to deal with it because you're like, it, it works. It does what I need it to do. But fuck the owner. Fuck the owner and fuck a lot of the users. Racists. Porn bots. You know, we're, we're I'm like, I hate you, but I need you. I, I need you to work for me. So that's where we're at, right? Now, <laughs> combing through this article, there was a couple of things that, that kind of pissed me off. First of all, I want to say, you know, rest in paradise to Pat's day. Okay, Pat's day. Pat Stay, if you don't know who Pat Stay was, um, a phenomenal entertainer, battle rapper, who was viciously and senselessly murdered right after he did a diss track about the game and his dealings. And I'm not saying that the game did anything I'm not saying that he contributed to anything. I'm saying that this is what the news reported. That after he dropped his diss track, he was stabbed to death. Okay. That shit never sat right with me. I'm not trying to get into no conspiracy, kawinky dink shit. But it just didn't sit right with me. And... A lot of people don't realize that when it comes to music and frequencies and money and energy that is exchanged, um, there are a lot of different forces that are involved with this. So if you're a person that makes music, you understand what I'm talking about, the types of frequencies that you put into your music. And I'm like, I strongly believe that the things that he said in his song probably disturbed some frequencies. Okay. And unfortunately, he was taken out of the game after, you see, you see what I did there? He tried to take out the game and got taken out of the game. So I don't know what kind of pull that Jason has, but... It still don't sit right with me. And, and you know, it's kind of like up there. You know, you, you mad because people people are talking about your dealings, right? Okay, cool. Cool story, bro. Anyway. So, I'm just going to go into my, my joint. I'm muting people now. I'm not fucking blocking nobody. I, I don't have time for that. Bruh. Fuck you. People say dumb shit. Okay, now now this post right here, I don't really expect a reply. I don't expect a reply because this dude is from Audio Mac, right? I want actually I should go back to show the relationship with Audio Mac, right? So hold on. So this post I put up, see now, motherfuckers, because you know if, if it's very strange. How mofos is senile. So I'm going to play this clip real quick to show you the type of relationship that this dude had over at Audio Mac and how this scam spilled out into that particular platform. Okay, so here we go. Got to turn my volume up. Here we go. All right. News. I am super excited. First, I want to give a shout out to Don Ezzo for tagging Audio Mac in my post from my blog regarding this scam, the R&B Next scam. Um, I just want to let y'all know that we did it, y'all. We fucking did it. This was taken off of their platform. 
for violating the terms of service. Now, again, I I'm going to zoom in here. Because, again, shout out to Donna as well. Why did I have to do all of that? Why did I have to do all of that? Hold on. Let me back on up. All right. So with this. So I guess your know, Twitter is Twitter is in the shitter. I'm sorry. So Don Ezzo had tagged Audio Mac after we were trying to get their attention to, you know, I had an article. Did Mario finesse up and coming R&B acts on MinxRadio.com when it was MinxRadio.com? And. Don Ezzo said, you know, now it's spilling into your home. And then, you know, he admit, Mr. Uh, not on my watch. <laughs> Bruh. Not on my watch. This album has been removed from our platform for violating our terms of service. Like, we did it, you guys. You know, we, 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 we did it. And we want everyone to know that we are here for the independent artists and we're doing what we have to do for that. I'm, I'm just like, okay, um. okay, call, call, call. Uh, uh, but, but then, but then he pulls this shit, right? I'll look at the date. Three two. Look at the time. Three two two. <laughs> Bruh. Three two two. Three two two. He posts up. Well, it's like technically, the Block Three Sixty Five business model isn't a total scam. These young artists are paying for mixtape placements, and they are receiving mixtape placements. They just have. Zero value. And I replied back, okay, so which one is it, Brian? Because here he is talking out his ass today. I spoke with Rolling Stone for a story about music marketing scams on Instagram, a topic for which I've spent these past four years raising awareness. Say no if an artist with a blue check mark shows up in your DMs and asks you for money to promote your music. Uh, Bruh. You, you, you. How do you get from this to this? Technically, it isn't a total scam. In his mindset, there is no way possible you cannot convince me that somebody fucking called him and told him, yeah, you need to fucking calm that shit down, bruh. Bruh. Technically... The business model isn't a total scam. So I ask the owner of Audio Mac, why the flip flop? Because this is this is flip flopping to me. You are riding the coattails. Like you, it's like you got hard because you you. It's Rolling Stone. Uh, it's Rolling Stone. It will do wonders for my business and my company. So let me act like I give a fuck about these independent artists. When 2020, this story you've been covering for four years, like you say, um, you were radio silent for about two and a half years. And after you said this shit, you were totally silent. You didn't say a fucking word after this. You didn't speak on this until, until... Rolling Stone did a piece on you. Right? Again, I'm very happy that you, you know, you got this other shit taken down. Don't don't get me wrong. But but I, I'm just like, what was what was the flip-flop? Because this this incident, hold on, let's see when he did this. December, this was December the second, he took this album down. But in June, it isn't a total scam, kind of, sort of. So I think what happened here that <laughs> you mean to tell me that Audio Mac 
had absolutely no fucking knowledge that Mario was going to Mario, an R&B superstar. You mean to tell me that the CEO, the owner, all the developers and everybody that looks at incoming content and outgoing content did not know that Mario was going to be dropping a bullshit mixtape on his shit? So from June, so June, July, August, September, October, six months, six months he posted this. And six months later, when we told him that, hey, yeah, this is this album has been removed from our platform for violating our terms of service. Bullshit. You knew good and damn well that this celebrity, just like a lot of other celebrities, let, let, let's head over to Audio Mac. Let's head over to Audio Mac because Audio Mac also acts as a distribution service. Uh, you, you're, you're telling me so the block 365 is not on there Mario to not M Mario Mario <sighs> So, so you took down that shit, but you still have this shit up. Hold on. And it was uploaded by unknown. So you have um, 219,000 plays on Mario, who is an established artist. And, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have a field day with this. I'm going to have a field day with this. So you're telling me that you are so dead set against. <laughs> I, I, it's like, it's unreal. It's unreal. So I'm going to also copy this, right? I'm going to go here. So this album was removed from our platform for violating our terms of service. Okay. So I, I'm going to have to do this. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't think I was going to. Um, I'm going to say, hmm. Tell me. Audio Mac. When you sat down with Rolling Stone and removed this album from your platform for being part, okay, for violating terms of service for their part with the block 365. Why was why was Mario still allowed to utilize your ser your, your service? <laughs> See, t Twitter has been so fucking annoying with this. Anyway, this is why I can't fucking stand Twitter. I'll have to cycle back on this because I'll have to cycle back. Maybe with a picture. Maybe with a picture. Let's 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 do a picture. I'm gonna have to do that. Um hold on. Okay, I know what I'm gonna say. Audio Mac. <laughs> Bruh. Let's play some hold music, shall we? Hold on.
just in time. <laughs> no, bruh. No, bro, because the thing is, is that you're you're not going to like in a sense, I feel like you guys fucking barked up the wrong tree. And it has nothing to do with the fact that all oh, Minx wasn't included. I don't give a fuck if I wasn't included. I give a fuck that nobody did their own research. That's what I give a fuck about. Nobody did their own research. They came with their bloodhounds to a carcass that was already mine and tried to say that, hey, we're about to eat and then put this shit behind a paywall. Bruh. But yeah, these are questions that are very solid, I believe. You know, why did you acknowledge that Mario broke the TOS by trying to upload a fraudulent mixtape by taking money from independent artists, but you still let him use your platform? It's not like it's fucking Spotify or iTunes. This is audio mag. It's, it's, it's like bottom feeder SoundCloud. Bruh. I expect this type of behavior from SoundCloud, not from someone that acts like they have not on my watch. <laughs> what, what, what were you watching? <laughs> Your pockets, perhaps. Anyway, allegedly, you thought he was going to get me there, huh? All right. Let's continue. All right. So, I'm getting these motherfuckers. I'm getting them all. I'm getting them all. Okay. So, now let's look at the article. Again, like I said, it's behind a paywall. If you're trying to help independent artists, why put it behind a paywall? Why do it? Oh, maybe they undid it. Maybe it's on the phone. On the computer, it's different. Okay, so let's keep, let's, let's, let's look at this. So Rolling Stone spoke with more than 12 independent musicians. They were more than 12, but anyway. They were in talks with verified accounts for Fat Joe, The Game, Jadakiss, Nick Cannon, Dave East, and others to promote their music for various amounts. And they were disappointed, obviously. Um, rapper Jeremiah Badilio says he was baffled when the accounts of Gilly the Kid and DMX before his death contacted him for mixtape and promotion spots. I'm a nobody. Why would they be hitting me up for a little bit of money when you're supposed to be rich and famous? A rep for Gilly the Kid did not reply to a request for comment. That's a good question, you know, because million dollars worth of game got, they, they got money during that, you know, situation. So we keep going down. When they start talking about the game. Get this mofo out of here. So the part that gets me, of course, they, oh my gosh, this is where he comes in. Oh my goodness. And not on my watch. Uh, um, yeah. Bruh. 56 mixtapes, right? I, I want to read that part because that part is very interesting. And I want to talk about how that came apart, uh, came about. So, Now, I'm going to have to find 56. Where is it at? There we go. So it says, the game's unverified SoundCloud page alone posted 56 playlists between October 2020 and August 2021, which is in fucking correct. In fucking correct. I got kicked out of SoundCloud. 
So you didn't get 56 mixtapes from SoundCloud, honey. You got 56 mixtapes from fucking, um, what is it called? My uh, top mixtapes. That's where you got it from. You know why I know that? Because I'm the one that actually fucking did that. I'll show you myself. I'll show you myself. At Minx Couture, the game, 56. Okay. This here, I made this because I'm the one that made this artwork. I wrote, the game forgot that he dropped 56 mixtapes during the pandemic. And this has every single playlist mixtape. Every single one. I, I logged it myself. I archived it myself. I actually copied. I'll never forget it. I was I was really in a great mood that day. And I just was like, you know what? I just feel like they're going to take all this information down. So I'm going to go and copy and paste each one. And that's exactly what I did. So what angers me is when you're mentioning 56, I'm like, and it has dates on, on these as well. When y'all hit me talking about, not hit me, but when y'all tell the airwaves that you counted 56, where did y'all get this figure from? Oh, my fucking goodness. Why are they telling me to sign into SoundCloud again? Okay, so I want to go back to this article and click on this now. So let's click on it. Let's keep going. This playlist has no tracks yet. You can't even count back to 56 mixtapes. This is not 56 mixtapes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Wow, 56 mixtapes. But the mixtapes that were from top playlists, the top mixtapes, they had music on it. Three years ago, they uploaded the artwork for it. It does count 56 on here. But you wasn't thinking about counting no fucking playlist, bruh. bruh. You wasn't thinking about fucking counting no playlist. They decided that instead of going the route of top mixtapes, they're like, we're going to go through the back door and we're going to find out how she came to that figure and blamed it on SoundCloud. That's what I feel. So at the end of the day, I don't feel that these people did a real comb through of anything. Because I'm like, really? 50? This is 56? Home team playlist presented by the game. Hold on. But these were all pulled from top mixtapes because that's what they were advertising. They were not advertising SoundCloud. If anything, they were advertising Spotify. So I don't, I don't believe that they had the intelligence to sit down. Why did you count the game's mixtapes, but you didn't count Bow Wow's mixtapes? You didn't count nobody else's mixtapes. 
regardless if, okay, they have 50s, regardless if you found it on SoundCloud, why didn't you also indicate top mixtapes? Because top mixtapes, you don't see nothing on here about top mixtapes. Hold on. Not one thing. Not one thing. They don't even talk about Mario. <laughs> they don't even talk about Mario. Bruh. Not one time did they mention Mario. So again, if you're doing real journalism, because I don't think they, they left the Mario shit out for a reason. Like they'll talk about the Neo shit, but they, 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 they totally left out the Mario shit. And wouldn't it be weird that you like, why didn't this dude from Audio Mac, why didn't he come out and say, oh, but you, you know what? There was a time where I had to have Mario's music removed because he was down with this shit, too. So, yeah, not one time. So just like what Usher says, you know, if you're going to tell it, then you got to tell it all. You got to tell it all. You got to tell it all, even down to the individuals that were originally posting and talking about this story. Those people that were doxxed, those people that were threatened. You had people that were in group chats with us that felt like they were being followed. They felt like, you know, they came home from work and, and they was like fucking, you know, chicken heads uh, on, on their fucking doorstep. Bruh. You know, it was serious. It was a serious time. And I feel, like I said, with Rolling Stone, y'all talking about, oh, we tried to reach out to Uncle Murda for a statement, but he has not. Uncle Murda, when I first started talking about this shit, Uncle Murda reached out to me and said that he wanted to sit down on my platform to discuss. So at the end of the day, if you're going to tell the full story, tell it all. This was not ever, I don't believe, supposed to come out, right? I feel that it's something a little bit more sinister. And we don't know who Big Trill is. We know he exists. We know that he has a lot of jewelry. We know he hangs out with Sauce Walker. We know that the game and Jada Kiss and all these mofos all running together, Benny the Butcher, everybody trying to get money out of their fans. Get that. You had DMX that passed away during this ordeal as well. Okay. One account down that they can't use. But the thing about this article that really bothered me the most was the fact that Big, Big Trill openly, right? Big Trill openly states that he... <laughs> he says hold on Boston rapper Sanchez Boston rapper claims that her dealings with the game were handled by his manager who she named Sarouche while working out their agreement she claims Sarouche repeatedly made suggestive comments saying he found her attractive questioned if he could fly her out to Miami so he can get to know each other better and asking her if she found him attractive so it says, when contacted by Rolling Stone, Sarouche was eager to explain his involvement and throughout an hour-long interview exudes the same brash confidence as he presents on social media. He disputes his comments to Sanchez with Suggestive and KG around confirming that artists he's currently partnered with only divulging he's been working with celebrities for a very, very long time and he has helped thousands of artists businesses and entrepreneurs secure paid marketing opportunities. He did not deny working with Fat Joe, Neo, The Game, or Jadakus. He does not answer how much money he's helped his clients get. He says, and you know how people pocket watch? Many people were not charged for mixtape placements, which is bullshit. So he says he usually gets $100,000 price tags that he gets traditional features that he can get. 
and those who are unhappy with the way their deals planned out said they only have themselves to blame. (laughs) You can't make this up. He says it's their job to go ahead and market it and utilize it. He takes serious offense to the notion that the marketing opportunities are a scam or a ripoff. There's never promised results, which I said earlier. No one says your Spotify numbers are going to go to the roof if you pay for a service and the services are delivered. It's not a scam. Sarush admits that him, him and his team often are the ones messaging independent artists from the celebrities' accounts. He says that. Right here. He admits he and his team are the ones that are messaging independent artists from their accounts. And while the celebrity musicians know what's going on with their pages, Sarush believes it's not, that's a new word for me, uh, duplicitous for newcomer artists to be in the dark about who they're making deals with. So, This part right here, celebrity musicians know what's going on with their pages. Yet they get on these podcasts. They get on these interviews. And they act like a fucking deer in the headlights. And they act like they don't know anything that's going on. That ain't me. But it's your account. To close out this hour segment, I'm just going to say that being an independent artist is very important to me. Coming across independent artists that have a dream is very important to me. Sometimes this is all we have. When you have individuals like this who don't care, it it, it, it shows, right? So I'm going to leave y'all with this um, clip. And here we go. Do you think you cleared a million dollars? Hold on. I forgot that I had this plane. Okay. Once again, we're going to close off with with this. A million or a billion? I said a million. Do you think you cleared a million dollars? What? Bro, awesome. (laughs) 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 Hey, bro, listen. You ever, are you familiar with my, with 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 my boy Big Trill? From the internet? Yeah. Man, I made four million dollars with Big Trill. My half. 50%. My half for the Instagram promotion of Big Trill Entertainment. Four million dollars. literally admitting that during a pandemic during a pandemic they took eight million dollars that was his his half for one person makes you think Hey, what's up? You're listening to everyone's favorite minx on minxradio.com. Exclusive.